And this morning, we will put this into a into final um, uh, outlook as we look at this in, as a finale, that we're saying that there should be an active role of each and every one of us as Christians in our workplace. There's a story. I have a question. After all this uh, series that we have, ito po yung aking lines, pag nakita yung mamalit, pang guide ko lang po yan, okay? But there's a question that I would like to ask you first. First question. Are you a employee or a, an engineer? Are you a worker, a carpenter, whatever is your work, a teacher? Are you an employee who happens to be a Christian? Or the other way around. Are you a Christian who happens to be an employee? Think about it. Can you analyze the difference? Okay, the key thing there is who happens to be. Where are you? Okay? So don't put that in questionnaire, that in COC reflection. It's part of your assignment to look upon this. And pag usapan yun as a family later on, kung ano ba tayo. But it's very important because we understand where we stand before the Lord as God's workers. Now, the, uh, even as we look into Colossians chapter 3, some of you are already thinking, Nako, grabe nam tong passage ito. We have to obey our masters in everything. Pastor or even the Paul doesn't know what kind of boss I have. That may be the kind of thinking that you have. Probably at this point in time, you're thinking that your boss is a boss from hell. Right? But you have to understand that this very thing that, is, um, that Paul has written um, during the first century was written at the time there was, the, there was such a thing as what you call as slavery. Now, at this point, let me just segue for a moment to think and for us to ponder upon a person that God made, an employee, in fact, who has got it made because he knew where he stand, he knew what the Lord wanted him to do, and eventually he was able to stand firm and did his best. In fact, that in these very sacred pages of our scriptures is a commendation of him, of what he used to do, of what he was able to do, and how he stood as an employee before the Lord. Let's see. Let's read Genesis chapter 39, verses 1 to 6. And just look at how he was commended as he was given a personal appraisal. Do you know what a pre- appraisal is? It is an evaluation of your performance. But this is an appraisal not by just anybody, not human forms, not by their that personal HR. But in fact, there was a personal HR, human resource, but an evaluation of his performance, but no less than God himself. Let's look at how he fared in his personal uh, evaluation. In chapter 39 of Genesis, verses 1 to 6, look at this. And maybe as you read this passage, wow, that's what I would like to be. That's how we ought to be. And look at this. The Lord was with Joseph, and he prospered, and he lived in the house of the Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in the eyes and became his attend- in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. Verse five. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. Wouldn't it be great? Did you see that again? Let's read it together if, you, if you're following me. Okay? Uh, start from verse 5. From the time, let's read it together. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord, what? Blessed the household of the Egyptian Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So he left in Joseph's care everything he had. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now you might be thinking, well, Joseph got it made. Ano ba kanyang job evaluation? What is the title that he had in the house of Potiphar? You know what? You know what his position was? He was called a slave. 
It's the same concept of slavery that you find in the New Testament. The only difference is that we find Joseph being blessed by the Lord because apparently he was there in his journey. God has a plan for him. In fact, as I was preparing this, I could still remember the message to Pastor Phil many, many years ago. And by the way, that's what we hope to be, that we, whenever we are able to share a message to you and has an impact on you, it will always have, it will always bear a, a meaning to your life. And I remember a message by Pastor Philip that was, what, 20 years, 17 years back, um, about Joseph, and he entitled it, From the Pit to the Palace. And he talked about the, the, the journey of Joseph from the pit to Potiphar's house to the prison to the palace. That's great, right? But you see, he was on a journey. But everything that happened even prior to this time when he was in the pit, when he was praying before God, even the time that he was there in his household family, that's, that's all preparation for what he was supposed to do. Now, that was the book of Colossians. In the book of Colossians, Paul was writing to them and telling them the same instruction that they are to be great workers for the Lord. I remember a story, this was popularized by Chuck Swindoll, about a, during the time of the Vietnamese, uh, uh, Vietnam War, there were four GIs, American GIs, who engaged for themselves the services of the local Vietnamese. But um, they grew fond of him, and the point was that they, would, they did some things that would, you know, as an act of, they were pranksters, actually. They would do something, would pull a trick on him, um, and made fun of him. They would um, nail his shoes to the ground, and so when he woke up, he would not get his shoes. There are times that would put a bucket of water over the, over the door, and when he came in, he would splash with water. Uh, there were times that, you know, uh, they would put thumbtacks in his bed, and all throughout the time, this Vietnamese guy would just laugh and just smile. So after a while, this poor guy said, okay, enough. I think we have done enough trick on him and we're not breaking him up. He just smiles. You know, he just laughs at all those things. And we just say sorry again and again. So this time he said, I think we should stop doing these things to him. So he called, the four guys called on him and said, okay, okay, um, uh, from this time on, we will not play tricks on you. And the, and the guy was just so happy. What do you mean? No more tricks? No more tricks. You mean no more nailing of the shoes? No more nailing of the shoes in the ground. No more bucket water in the door? No more water bucket in the floor? No more thumbtacks on my bed? No more thumbtacks on the bed? Great! The Vietnamese said, from now on, I will not spit on your food. <laughs> Parang tapid kayo magtumawa. Next time, maglalagay po ko ng ano rito, ng light bulb. Pagka pinindot ko, tatawa kayo. Okay? Joke po yun eh. Next time, I will not spit on your, bed, on, your, on your food. Now, sometimes we can fake it, right? We can fake it. We can always do something as if we're doing, enjoying it and doing things right, especially for us Pinoy. Alam nyo tayo mga Pinoy, mapag ano tayo eh, mapag matyaga tayo. Kahit na we, we're not feeling well about things, we just smile and say everything is fine. No, but that's how it is. But eventually, we find will be found out because we want to do our best in all these things. Now, the point that I would like to share with you is this: in your workplace, there is a principle I want you to remember for all of us. Okay, everybody, read this. Loom. In other words, God has planted you where you are today, and God expects you to make the most out of what you are and where you are today, for His glory and for His honor. Don't wait until you transfer to the next company because it may not happen. Don't wait until you get a different boss. It may not happen. But right there, you may not be able to change your situation, but there's something you can change, and that is your attitude. That is your perspective. And Paul is actually saying, I want you to bloom where you are because where you are, God can be at work. God is at work in you and can make a difference in your life. Well, how do we do this? What, are, what is this about? Let's look at this passage in Colossians chapter 3, and it gives us a very natural uh, outline. It talks about the employee, and that is the, emplo that is the slave. Now, some of you might be saying, well, I might as well be a slave because the way my, my bosses treat me as if uh, I am a slave. Well, I know. Um, but during the time, it was not very easy very, being a slave. I mean, 
As a slave, you don't have rights. In fact, people during the Roman and the Greek times would consider a slave as simply a breathing tool. In fact, they have a practice that if you're an old slave, okay, if you're an old slave, they would not even feed you and just wait until you die. Because that's, you're practically worthless. And so they did everything while all the bosses would just enjoy themselves, whatever they're doing, the, the, no matter how tired you are as a slave, they would, you would just simply do things and you cannot complain. So even though there were revolts and in some uh, instances about, by these slaves, it never really prospered. But that was their culture. Now, Paul was telling them that there's a different perspective in the household of God today. Because apparently in the Christian church in Colossae, there were now already Christians, already people who are converts, both the masters and their, and their, and, and their servants. In fact, the book of Philemon is a letter to a master concerning his um, slave Onesimus. Now, as employee, you find here, again, let's look at this. Colossians chapter 3. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only with their eyes is on you and to win their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Three important things that we find here. There's the element that every worker should be obedient. Now, it talks about obedience. In our time today, it doesn't simply mean that we say we don't ask any question. In fact, the idea of obedience is to be, sub, sub, to be in agreement with the direction and the vision. If you're in a company, the first, one of the first things that you'll be oriented with is what is this company stand for? Lahat po ng companies ngayon, halos lahat ng companies, meron po silang mission and vision. And some of the things that they'll be asked to do is to memorize this vision and vision. I was at um, SM the other day, apparently there were some sales leader, ladies who were there and they were memorizing. They had the piece of paper. And then the other, other girl said, ano ba ito ba yung vision? Ano ba ito? Ito ba yung vision o yung mission? And so in other words, you have to be able to abide. Just like in CCPC, we have a membership class. And one of the things that you'll be have to do is to understand that once you become part of Capital City Baptist Church, you have to embrace the mission and the vision of the church. So that's how it is. It is in obedience. Now, the thing that he says here is that he are, you are to obey your earthly masters in everything. Now, that's absolute. During the time, they have no choice. They have to do everything the master says. In fact, that is the most wonderful picture that, is, that Paul wanted to, 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 to um, uh, picture himself. Every time he starts a letter, he says, Paul, not just a servant. If you're using the NASB in your American standard, you would always say, I, Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ. In other words, it's the kind of servant that doesn't have a choice. It doesn't have the, it doesn't have the, the prerogative of being free because I'll be a servant for life. And that's the picture here. And so Paul says, in the same manner, you... As slaves working where you are as a Christian, you have to be obedient. Now, we thank the Lord, of course, that slavery is no longer in effect, right? And thank God that we can talk about our rights. But of course, even in our situation today, there will be situations where in our, our bosses will, will really squeeze the thing out of us and get the best out of us for the less amount of salaries that we want to get. But you know, we understand that as the ways of the world. But Paul is saying you have to be obedient in everything. You have to be subservient. You have to understand. Now, for our situation, like I said, we're talking about the companies, what it stands for. What about your bosses? Yes, you obey them in everything. Now, even as I say that, let me just share as a segue that there are also three ways, three things, out of logic and out of the scriptures, Three areas of commands that we can disobey. I'm talking about our day, our time. We should not disobey. We should disobey if the, if the command being given to us are on three areas. First, we can disobey if it is illegal. That means it is against the law. Anyone, any employer should not 
force or coerce any one of us to do something that is against the law. Second, we can disobey if it is immoral. It is immoral. But the problem with this idea of morality is what is the standard of morality as far as the boss is concerned and your standard of morality is concerned. That's the reason, friends, that I want you and we encourage you to stand firm and know the Word of God and stand pat by what you believe in. And moments and times when you are, when you and your bosses come to grips with those kinds of conflict, you have to be able to talk to each other. In moments like this, you need to be judicious. You, know, you need to understand how you'll be able to, to work on this situation without anything that will break the command of the law, command of God. Immoral. Something that would break or disobey the heart of God. And thirdly, you should not disobey. It is something that will be injurious, that will injure you, that will inflict injury to you or to someone else. Okay? So, the first part is that we should be obedient in everything. Other than those three things, we can obey. Second thing, of course, is that we have the restrictions, but there is also the kind of attitude that we should develop. And what is developed here is that not only when their eye is on you to win their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence to the Lord. What kind of attitude is this? The attitude of what we call as the eye service. You know? Alam niyo ang pinakamahirap na gawin sa lahat kung kayo po nagtatrabaho? Magkunwari. Di ba? I mean, we are there, you're working, tapos pag wala kang magawa, Oh, ganun nga, medyo bored ka na. Tapos bigla nakita mo yung boss nandiyan sa tabi, bigla kang kukuha ng ballpen, bigla kang harap sa, sa computer, doing nothing. Diba? Sometimes we're like that. But we have to be authentic. We have to be real, realistic about this. In other words, when we, have our, when we do something, we have to give our best at all times. And the attitude is, we don't do it to please our bosses, our human bosses, not because their eyes are upon us, but we have always to take the initiative of doing the right thing at all times. We have a saying, I used to work in human resources, pero meron po kaming sabi, we have a saying, HR, people or people don't do what you expect. People do what you inspect. Tama, mali. Even po yung household natin sa bahay, Pag hindi po nakatingin, hindi tayo nakatingin, ala, hindi na gagawin mga trabaho sa bahay. But the very moment that we're there, parang ang sipag-sipag nila. E ganun din naman po tayo sa pisina. Hindi po ba? But in th this is a different thing. Because now Paul is giving us a divine perspective that even though our bosses, human bosses, may not be able to see us at times, God, who is our ultimate boss, will be able to see us. And what else? The perspective. What is a divine perspective in this? But with sincerity of you, on you and to win the favor, but with sincerity of heart, reverence for the Lord, whatever you do, work at it with your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Now, do you find a divine perspective in the things that you do? You may be thinking this is just job for me. You might be thinking even that this is just something to make to get you by for the paycheck every month, right? But, well, yes and no. Yes, because you need a job. But at the same time, God wants you to be a testimony for Him. God wants you to shine for Him. God wants you to become salt and light for Him where you are. And I tell you people, friends, you are in a great privilege. Kami po ni Pastor George, kami po ni Pastor Bot dito. We have work to do in ministries like this. But there are limitations of reaching out to people. We have limitations in reaching out to people. And we are able to reach these people through you. God placed you in places, in positions, in our community, in your in corporation, in your company. And you are able to reach who? Your bosses, your, your colleagues, your co-workers. People that will never ever, ever meet in our lifetime. But someday, 
Sabi nga po, yung isang song, thank you for giving to the Lord because someday when we come before the presence of the Lord, people will come to you and say, thank you. And perhaps there will be people who come to us and say, thank you, what for? I don't even know you. And they say, for equipping these people in evangelism explosion. Thank you for equipping these people in discipleship and Bible study. Thank you for, for equipping these people, the, your, your, the members of the church, uh, by the word in the pulpit. And because of that, what they hear from the pulpit, they echo it in our company. They echo it where we were. And it is because of the ministry. That's how we multiply ourselves. And the Lord has placed you where you are to make that impact. Don't ever think that your influence is so limited. My friends, you have work to do and you have great potentials of doing these things for the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's the for attitude and there's the perspective. Now, we have to understand also that in doing so, when we want to be obedient, we have the right attitude, this changes everything about us. This changes everything about how we do things for a company. Now, I want you to know, listen. In as much as all of us are Christians, in as much as God has entrusted us with res responsibilities like this, I want you to know that when you go out to work, and you go to your workplace, you are there to work in the first place. And from there comes the overflow of all other things like ministry. When I was working, I had one and a half years working in a secular company. And they knew that I was a Christian. In fact, they knew that I was a pastor. I was here at CCBC then. And, but there was one person in our department, in HR, who was also Christian, very much on fire for the Lord. But you know what? After a while, I was the one who recommended that she be terminated. You know why? She was so much on fire for the Lord that during office hours, it would be gone. And she was, she's my secretary. She's po yung not secretary, sorry, clerk. Clerk po ng department namin. And I was the one in charge of, uh, of um, recruitment. And every time I look for her, wala siya. Babalik, sasabi niya sa akin, JC, praise the Lord. Nakausap ko yun, na-witnessan ko siya. During office hours? Maya-maya, wala na naman. Sabi niya, nasa ka? Eh, wala pang cellphone doon eh. Babalik, sasabi niya, nag-Bible study kami doon. During office hours? So much so that eventually the bosses took notice of what was happening. But I took that responsibility because she was under me. What is your recommendation? I had no choice. And you know what? It breaks my heart that the reason why she has to be fired was that she was doing the ministry in the company in the wrong way. So I'm telling you, when you get into your workplace, you are there to work. And out of doing the best thing, it, uh, it can overflow into something different, and that is the ministry. I know there's a church, a church close to us at Capital City, Gospel Church of Manila. It's a Gospel Church of Manila. It's a church that was born dun po sa state land, dun po sa Binondo. And that church is also very close to us because it was started by my brother. She was one of the state, uh, real estate agents at that time, but after a while, she would, he would um, lead Bible studies, and from out of that group came a cell group, and eventually it became a church. Who knows? God can open doors of opportunities like those for us, but we need to do it anyway. Okay? Now, let me just share with you. We'll do it fast, just for your information. I don't want this to be a management course this morning, but for you to just understand what are you being appraised for when you are evaluated, kung kayo po yung nasa company. Now, this also works if you're in the household. Ano po ba yung mga nire-require natin? Okay? Ito po yung mga tinatanong sa ating pong appraisal. Now, if you want to know what these are, you ask Brenda about it sa ating pong HR dito. But these are the elements that they look for. And when you have a good score on these matters, they would say, good for regularization. You have a great mer merit, merit increase. And that's how they do it. But the bottom line is, meron pong dalawang importanteng bagay 
two elements that are important in our companies. Okay? Number one is effectivity. Effectivity means that you're doing the right thing to get the right job done, the right results. So it's effective. Are, is what we're doing effective? Are we able to get the right results? Okay? Are we doing it right? But the second thing is not only that it's effective, but it's also, it should be efficient. It should be efficient, right? We're doing things right, okay? We're doing, in spoon, effectivity is doing the right things. Efficiency is doing things right. That means cost-effective ba? Uh, is it, uh, meron po bang um, more profit, etc., etc.? Now, yan pa ang company natin. But in the Christians, as far as Christians are concerned, God is not concerned only with the results and how it's done. God is more concerned when it comes to character. So every person that calls himself a Christian and a worker should have these three elements in mind when he works. He should be effective, he should be efficient, and he should have the character. That's very important. And Paul is putting this in perspective that the reason why you're doing this is because you are God's children. And you have to do it for the glory of God. Now, you might be thinking, what about if I have a harsh boss? What if I'm, I have a harsh boss? You're not talking about my, you don't know what the kind of boss that, uh, that I have. Well, let's read 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay, let's read from the scriptures. 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay, open your Bibles. Um, dati po, pagka book pa yung Bible form, talagang when you say, open your Bibles, ganda ng sound ng Bible, so flipping pages, no? But in 1 Peter chapter 2, okay, mark this on your, on your Bibles, verse 18. You're asking, what if my boss is harsh? And if, what if he's unjust? Here's the answer for you. Peter says, slaves, again, the slaves are being addressed, Submit yourselves to your masters with all respect. Not only to those who are... What? Are your Bibles open? Not only for those who are good and considerate, but what? Also for those who are harsh. That's heavy saying. I mean, if you have a choice and you have that kind of boss... Try to find your way out of that company. But if you can't, you have no choice, then work your way into it and change your attitude. Because that's what it's saying here. Now, on the other hand, there are some who are saying, well, paano naman kung Christian yung boss ko? So in other words, I can just be, um, I can dilly dally my way into things. I can just be, you know, I can do things so, so long because anyway, we're part of the same family. Just like my staff at, uh, at, this, at the corporate. What would do about it? Well, here's a reading from 1 Timothy. I would like you also to read that in 1 Timothy. In 1 Timothy, um, okay, sorry. See, I'm also finding my way into the passage. But 1 Timothy says this in chapter 6, verse uh, 1 and 2. All of you who are under the yoke of slavery should consider their masters worthy of full respect so that God's name and our teaching may not be slandered. Okay, verse 2, take note. Those who have believing masters are not to show less respect for them because they are brothers. Instead, what? They are to serve them, how? Even better, because those who benefit from their service are believers and dear to them. These are the things you are to teach and urge on them. How many of you have Christian bosses? If you do have, then by all means, treat them with respect. And all the more, do your best so that they will succeed and you yourself will succeed too. Now, what about the employers? Is there something, is there any word to the employers? Yes, of course. In the same passage, the responsibility is the employer's responsibility. There are twofold things that uh, Paul is saying to the employers, the things. Number one is that for them to be fair. Now, simply put, 
When you are fair, the question is, what is Judem? Now, I would like to put this in the perspective of a household. Kuminsan po, yan ang ating pong na, nakakaligtaan. But in our household are people that work for us. And sometimes they're the kind of people that we take for granted. We try to squeeze the most out from them and to be able to get, to give them less of what they deserve. Now Paul is saying, if you are that employer, be fair to them in their treatment. Especially during the time, this was a game changer because at that point in time, sabi ko nga po, ang slaves were not considered as people. They were living, breathing tools. Now Paul is saying, you have to treat them humanely. You have to treat them as people. You have to treat them as brothers in the Lord. And how do you do that? Be fair. How is that to be fair? Then by all means, help out the household. Help out in the things that they should be doing. Do not over, do not over um, lay them with kinds of, all kinds of responsibility to the point that they get sick. That's why in the, in the time of Jesus, that was unusual that the centurion came to Jesus and said, Master, I have a servant. That's fairly unusual because the, that centurion could have said, well, I could have just let him die. But it seems to me that that slave was somebody endeared to him simply because that person treated that guy humanely. So be fair. Yung pong day off nila, yung pong kanila mga leaves, ngayon po meron tayong kasambahay lo. Have you, have you um, read through it? Do they have now the SSS? Meron na po ba sila mga feel health, etc., etc.? Give what is due them. Their day offs, the time off. Are you fair? And perhaps if you're not even fair to these people, that's the reason probably why your bosses are not fair with you. I challenge you to do what is right and God will greatly reward you for it. But the second aspect of it is this. Be friends, be familial. What do I mean by this? Not only are we friends, but familial means to make them part of the family. Have you noticed that in the book of Ephesians, the book of Colossians, um, um, the book of 1 Timothy, whenever Paul discusses about relationships, it starts with the husband-wife relationship. He goes to the relationship of the parents and the children. He talks about all those things about the household. Then he recognizes that the slaves are part of the household. I'm telling you, yung pong yung mga kasambahay are part of your family. It would be good if your company, if it would be good if your household will open your home to these people whom you will call employed, employees, and say to them, you're not just employed to my corporation, you are being employed and becoming part of my comp or cor corporate family. That's what he's saying here. Bakit? You have to remember that every time you hire a person, you already put your trust into that person. Napaka mahirap po. Nagkaroon tayo ng mga, mag, na magkaroon po tayo ng mga employees that we don't trust. Di po ba? So much so, tingnan po natin sa kasambay natin. Imagine yourself. Ito po yung manarinig nating horror stories sa TV, sa mga news. Imagine yourself, you hire a yaya only to find out after several, only several days that your yaya mistreats your baby. How do you feel about that? Diba? So, there's an element of trust here. Even the employees that you hire in your companies, there's an element of trust that they can do the job for you. Yung po mga yaya, for example, those who are taking care. Imagine, you leave your house, you go to work, and you, le you leave your children, your babies to them. Now, how do you entrust them brightly? First of all, you orient them white. And secondly, you treat them right. Some of us have to manage our expectations. I'm talking to those of you, as an example, those of you who have little kids being taken care of by yaya. Akala natin, just because meron pong yaya, hindi pong masusugatan yan. Especially at the age ng two, ng three, yung tinatawag po nating terrible, ah, hindi pala, terrific. Terrific trees, right? Yung po yung time na sila yung makukulit. Di ba? And then you entrust them to their yayas. Pagdating sa bahay, may bukol, merong sugat. Pagkagalitan mo, sasabunutan mo pa. Di ba? Eh buti nga po, andun, nag-aalaga. How do you know, okay, ito po yung nakuha ko lang sa mga lectures na ano, how do you know, segue lang, 
How do you know that you have the right yaya or the wrong yaya? When you go home, okay, if your child is happy to see you when you come home and would start running towards you away from his yaya, you know that something is wrong. Right? But if you come home, in spite of the fact that you're there, remember you're gone the whole day. Pagdating mo, hindi pa pumupunta, hindi, po tum- hindi malang tumatakbo yung anak niyo sa inyo. What does it mean? Endeared siya sa yaya. That means he's being treated well. Simple lang. A little something. In the same way, when you have employees like that, you have employees that will be loyal to you. They will give their best to you. And these are the kinds of people that you entrust yourself and your resources to. Now, being family is this. In your corporation, those of you have businesses, being family is to treat them as part of your family. Familial. Um, how do you treat them? Paminsan-minsan ba? Do you talk to them? Question. Kayo pong mga boss, when was the last time even that you have said to one of your drivers, one of your yaya, when was the last time na kinumusta mo yung pamilya nila sa probinsya? When was the last time you talked to your co-employee or yung mga staff ninyo sa, school, sa, sa, sa corporate world? When was the last time that you asked about their husband, their wife, their kids? If they don't see the love from you, you're just colleagues. We want to develop a, a relationship that is familial in nature. We become part of each other's lives. We become friends, not just colleagues, but friends. And, you know, it's important that we, they, they feel that. In fact, I even have something to share, sometimes even with titles. Alam niyo po, tayo, Pinoy, mahilig tayo sa mga titles. Oh, si Doc, si Atorni, si ATTY. Alam niyo po yung si Bokap, kilala niyo si Bokap? Alam niyo si Bokap? Barrio Captain po, ibig sabihin nun. Okay? But sometimes we are so particular about titles. And these titles can oftentimes come as a curtain that would divide the relationship that we have. We're so particular that you call me by my title. You know what? Titles are not that important. Titles are important for three things, at least to me. Titles are important because it tells you about your relationship with the person. Titles are important because it tells you what you do. And titles are important because it tells you what you're in charge of. One time I was here, I was visiting somebody, and ang sabi sa akin, Pastor, I feel so uneasy to call you Pastor. Is it okay to call you JC? I said, sure, no problem. Eh kasi magkakabat, magkababata naman tayo eh. Now, those are people that I've known for years dito po sa church. Of course, some of you know me as a pastor already. But there are some friends, I feel uneasy. There are times when you, call, when you hear me call Pastor George as George. You know why? We went to the same high school together. Kami po ni June Director were batchmates together in high school. So it's just, you know, we're friends. Even before we became pastors to each other, we were friends. Okay? But in some people, titles can be such a burden in that relationship. Burdens at times, although sometimes, of course, the titles can be a familiar part of the, the relationship that we have. But as an employer, it is a responsibility to do a share, to be able to work well with these people that we have. Now, let us go fast for the rest of time. Okay? So the reason we find in Titus, um, let's just go over this. Uh, Colossians chapter 4, verse 1. What's the... What's the reason for this? Chapter 4, verse 1 of Colossians. Tell us the reason why we have to do this. Chapter 4, verse 1. Masters, you have to be fair. Why? Because you provide your slaves with what is right and fair because you know that you also have a master in heaven. That means you yourself will become accountable before God eventually. And you have to do well. It's not only that they are being evaluated, you yourself are being evaluated by your master in heaven. And what is the reward? In Colossians 3.24, what is the reward in all these things? We see here in verse 24, it says here, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ whom you are serving. Now you may have 
a boss, you may be employed right now that you are under salaried, underpaid, and you work your butt out for it. But it says, if you do well, your master in heaven is looking upon you, and one day you will receive your reward. Now, the test is this. In 1 Corinthians, I put this there so that we can all see this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, let's read it together. Okay? For no one, let's read it out. For no one can lay down any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is. Because it will be revealed with and fire will test the quality of a person's work. Question. Is your work that you do right now marked by quality? Last week, I spoke the first service, but I talked about quality and excellence. That's the reason why we have branded names. That's the reason why there are, there are companies that do well in the stock market. Because that makes a difference. What makes a difference between these two is the quality of work that we do. That's the reason why you buy all kinds of clothing. One, thing, one, one clothing is more expensive than the other because of the quality. And that's what you're paying for. I don't know if Ephraim remembers, but years ago when you're here, he, was, he, he gave us a test. He just came from Levi's then. Sabi niya, one of the things that made the difference sa Levi's is not the cloth. Sabi niya, it's a thread. Remember? Chinalens siya kami. Sabi niya, binigyan kami. I think young people lang kami doon. Binigyan kami ng ganyang kahaba na sinulid from Levi's. Ang sabi niya sa amin, gato, kung sino man sa inyo, maputo niyo yan with your bare hands, yung thread na yon, you'll get a pair of pants. Ha, happy, happy kami. What could, you know, that's so easy, that's just a thread. But below and below, lo and behold, none of us were able to cut it. Then we knew that's the reason why it was that expensive. That's the same thing. You, if eventually, because of the work you do, will put a good price on yourself. Eventually, you'll be in demand. Eventually, your corporation, your company will say, we cannot do without you. And once you, you threaten or you even try to resign, they will say, no, you have to stay. Why? Because you are worth it. And that's what they're saying here. Your work will be tested, and all that you do should be something that will, will that make it with the test of fire. And my friends, this is where it is. Bloom where you're planted. Don't wait till you get to the next job. Don't get to the next, the next boss. But right where you are, right now, you have to understand that God has placed you there for a purpose. Now, what are some principles or insights that we can learn from here? Number one, let's read this together. Your conduct and performance, let's read it. Your conduct and performance in the workplace is of God's character and enablement on your life. You know what it's saying? Because you, working as a factory worker, you is working as a clerk, you as a student in university, okay? You're gaining, you are reflecting the ability of God to equip you to do the task you're in. Now, some of us may, may even think, well, I'm not in the right work. Well, find it. And eventually, God will lead you there. Secondly, let's read it. Excellence opens doors of greater opportunities. That's quality. Once they hear about you, they'll be pirated. The ones they hear about your work, it will, be, it, will be, it will be in demand. You know, one of our staff here is Joel Ballesteros. He used to be our IT, dito po sa CCBC. He was a political science graduate dun po sa isang university in Katarman, sa ating pong uh, daughter church to on. He came here to find a job. He ended up, he wanted to take on law, but he can't support himself. He worked here as an IT, but he eventually bloomed. And for some reason, nung po nandito siya, we would tell him, okay, Joel, what kind of schooling do you want to improve on your IT? Sabi niya, just give me the books I need. And he learned it, and he learned it, and he learned it only from books. 
when he transferred, he came from here. He went to IGSL, another Christian company. That's a, in, um, their seminary. And from there, he went to a shipping company. Yung pa po trabaho niya. But while he was there, the things that he learned, the things that he did well, he was able to come up with a program that was eventually used by their company. And he was able, he was bought, that, that program was bought for a big amount of money. Now you can see him. He has a house. He's actually now an assistant vice president of the shipping company. Who would have thought? Okay? But he excelled. He did well. He worked his, well to be, he worked his way into becoming a qualified person of work. And that opened doors of opportunities. And we thank God for you because you have such opportunities as well. If you're not there yet, work on it. And God will honor you. And of course, your success brings glory to God. You know what it says in John 17? This is what Jesus' prayer prior to the cross. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. You know where I usually use this? At the funeral. But I hope that today, even as there's no funeral here, I want every one of us to read this together. So that if today God calls on us, we can stand before God with conviction and we can say to Him, What? Let's read it. I have brought you by completing the work you gave me to do. Where are you today? Are you blooming? Are you using God's resources in your life so that eventually you get this? God's thumbs up. God stands up. And when you come face to face with him, he will say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. Bloom where you are. Bloom where you are. Use God's work. Good, good, use God's resources for his glory and for his honor. Let's pray. Lord, we just want to come before your presence. We just thank you for opportunities that you've given us. And even, Lord, today we come honoring you with your grace, honoring you with the reflection of who we are because we are a reflection of your glory. Lord, even right now we ask that you would forgive us if for some reason we've been with Joker. But today, Lord, even as you have challenged us from your word to do our best because ultimately you're a master. I pray, Lord, that you change us so that we'll be better. Transform us, Lord, to become workers who need not be ashamed. Workers who spell a difference between quality and mediocrity. Workers who will make a difference as we excel and reflect your glory in our workplace. Amen and amen. God bless you.